Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, we're gonna talk all about keys, right? How you use them and how you create them. Power BI Desktop, stay tuned. I talk a lot about data modeling and I get a lot of questions about it and people go, Patrick, you're pulling your data from a data warehouse. It's already nice and pristine. You always talk about, oh, you should separate your lookup tables or dimensions into one table and keep all your facts, you know, your additive values, semi-additive values in another table. The problem is when people get, you know, their data in Excel, flat files, CSV files, however they get their data, doesn't have the nice keys to perform the joins. And they go, Patrick, well, how do you create those keys? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it, all right? so. Instead of all this talking, you guys know what I like to do, let's head over to my laptop. I have this flat file that I received and there's lots of different ways that I can, you know, aggregate my data or look up my data or perform analytics against my data by airport name, by airline name, claim type, claim, type, claim site, item, lots of different uh, attributes here. But if you scroll across, this is just one fat, uh, flat table. And when I load it up into the Power BI desktop, I'm gonna get a single table with lots of fields. And you guys know I like to, I like to group, you know, group things together. And so what I like to do is I'll go and, you know, I'll analyze this, this flat file and I'll look for, you know, common things that belong together in a single table. For example, airport code and airport name. And this one's kind of nice because it looks like it has a unique identifier, but that's not what I want to talk about today. The ones I want to talk about are the ones that don't have unique, unique identifiers. The strings like this one, this is a great example. Airline name, right? It's just the airline name. And if I made it a separate query and then joined it to back to this table, I would just be joining on strings. Really, um, but let's let let me show you how you can use these keys, how you can generate and create a key to kind of insulate you from you know all the caveats of using strings in your joins and just use integers. All right, that's what this video is focused on. So the first thing I do is I start massaging, I start get, getting intimate with the data. Right. So the very first thing I do is I go to transform. I right click on that column, go to transform, and I trim it out. Right. So I remove the white space at the beginning and the end. Just get rid of all the white space. Um, then the next thing I do is I go to view in the ribbon in the query editor and I'll click on column quality and notice there's lots of empty columns there. Hmm. Need to fix that because I don't like blanks in my in the list of values. Um, I'll do column distribution. It'll show me ah, it's a good distribution of data here and then even my column profile, right? Show me some things here, right? So it looks like the only thing that I really need to clean up is blanks, but I do one more check. I'll do one more check before I'm done. So I'll turn all this stuff off, right? And what I'll do is I'll go home and I will sort this, right? I'll sort that value ascending that's the very first thing i'll do and i see all my blank values so i'll see all my blank values i'll right click i'll go to replace values and i'll decide on what do i want to re replace that blank value with so i'm going to say that they didn't supply right the air airline name was not supplied bam there we go so now it's not supplied the last thing i do before i get ready to get ready to build that table is i want to take a look and see if i can get a, a good idea of all the distinct values i've done that with my column profiling but sometimes it doesn't reveal you know some like characters in that list right so let me show you what i'm talking about if i click on the drop down and right now it says hey only not supplied there but i'm going to choose load more and it'll reach back grab all that data and give me a distinct list and just as i thought right there's a dash. I don't want to use that dash either. Um, I'll probably do some research on it and try to figure out what dash mean, but I found out that dash and blank mean the exact same thing. So guess what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to do a right click here, replace values, and I'm going to say replace this also with not supply, right? And so what you'll notice is now if I go here and do this load one more time, right? I don't have any blanks, I don't have any dashes or anything like that. And my data set is a nice clean list of values. And what you'll also notice is if you take a look at the little profile bar here, I don't have any blank values, right? It's a 100% 
valid data, which is great. So the next thing I do um, to get to get this data set prepared for my keys is I'll right click on this column and I'll say add as new query. If it's multiple columns, you'll need to duplicate that set, right? Duplicate that query, remove the other columns and then start doing take do the steps of cleaning up from there. Fortunately, I'm only looking at one column, so my steps are a little shorter. So I'll right click on it and then I'll choose add as new query. Right. There we go. Add as new query airline name. It provides it as a list. I'm going to say two table. Really simple. Click OK. All right. And I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call this airline name. And then I'm going to rename this table to airline. Two more steps, right? The next thing I'm going to do is once this finishes, once the query editor finishes doing all its work, I'll right click and then I'll say remove the duplicates, right? So now I have a complete distinct list of all the airlines that I want to analyze, right? Distinct list. And then finally, what I'm going to do is go to add column and there's a feature. People don't talk about this or use this feature. It's called an index column. I'm going to click the drop down and you'll have a choice, right? You can start from zero, from one, or you can do your own custom, um, like I call it an auto generated numbering column. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say from one, there you go. So it gives me a unique index, a unique ID for each one of those values. So I'm going to take that, move it over here call this airline ID. And so before before I move on, right, a lot of people go, why are you doing this? It's just easier for me to join on those integers. I can depend on the integer a little better. Since I'm generating it, I control it. I don't have to worry about anybody changing things, mucking up things. It can slow your refresh down. Doing a lot of these because the mashup engine has to do all this work, especially if you're going to get the CSV file. If you have a data warehouse, if you have access to a relational database system, you should try to do this, you know, on the back end or inform the people that's developing the repository, the central repository that you're pulling from. Hey, can you guys do this for me this way? It makes my life so much easier. OK. All right. So the next thing I do is I'll go back to the main table where everything was at and I'll do a merge. So I go home and I'll do merge queries. And I'm going to merge on airline name and I choose my new airline one, airline name, right? And you can wait for the estimator to tell you, hey, this is how many matches I found, right? And we'll, we'll just give it a second here through the magic of YouTube. Adam will probably cut all of it out so we can quickly see what the match is. There you go. So 100% match. Man, am I good. All right. So we'll click OK. And then the very last column that you'll see here is one that says airline that says table. There's two little arrows that's pointing out like that, right? Click it. And what I want you to do is uncheck airline name and uncheck use original column name as prefix and click OK. Now that's giving me my airline ID so I can match back on the ID in this table to the ID in the new table that I created. And then the final step in the query editor, at least, I'll go over to airline name and I'll remove it, right? So, because I, I don't need it anymore because I'm going to look it up from the other table. Then I'll close and apply. Probably I'll do this thing, pulling all the data from the CSV files for both of them. It has to pull it all, do all the work of mashing it up, doing all the preparation of that data um, like I did. There we go. This is the important part is the detecting my relationships. So if I go over to the model now, you can see that I have a one to many relationship between airline ID. So instead of having all those fields clumped in the one table, right? I can separate them out using this method. And then my end users can look at them individually in the field list and say, oh, okay. So I want to get a list of airlines and I want to filter the claims by those airlines instead of scrolling up and down this list, trying to find, you know, the column that they're looking for, the attribute that they're looking for. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. Are you doing this today? Have, or do you have a different method? I love to know. Let's continue the conversation where in the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel, hit that subscribe button. And if you like my video, give me a big thumbs up as always from Adam and myself. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.